Thank you. The sheer stamina of this group to be here for one more speaker, I, I thank you so much for, 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 for this. Um, I, uh, I took an awful lot of qualitative research courses in graduate school. Now, saying those words ought to sound exactly the same as if I had said I studied Spanish in high school. That's really, that's, you know, that this doesn't qualify anybody to do anything. But I, I bring it up because I want to tell you this story. In my, in my classes back then, my professors spoke as if qualitative research was under siege by the insidious threat of numbers. In some cases, our professors seemed straight up paranoid in a way that made us concerned for their mental health. We students resolved never to use the words mixed methods in class because we were pretty sure that there was one professor in particular who would have exploded before our eyes if we had done so. And I think about this a lot. Um, in retrospect, I suppose their paranoia wasn't really terribly helpful, but I'm not going to say that they were altogether wrong either. Uh, all those professionals were, were the professors were right about the fragility of qualitative research. It is expensive. It is difficult. It's time consuming, and it's always vulnerable to the intrusion of simple, quick, cheap numeric analysis. So the professor was right. The, re the sky really is falling. And actually, it's been falling for an awfully long time. Um, I, I, there's a terrific article by Lev Manovich, who, and I love how he sort of situates um, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the disciplines from going from psychology to economics and sociology and so on, all the way up through the humanities uh, in terms of the, uh, in the, the, the predominance of numbers in those fields. Why wouldn't? numbers um, come to be equally intrusive in our profession as well. Um, uh, but another reason why Lev Manovich's piece is so good is because what, he's, what he, he points out is that the kind of thing, the kind of numbers that, that really scared my qualitative professors, it was really all just sort of boiled down to descriptive statistics. And that's really just not the case is that that's not where this threat, so to speak, comes from. Um, a list of things that he points out, um, pattern recognition, information retrieval, artificial intelligence, computer science, visualization, data mining, all of these kinds of things that, that we've been talking a lot about in the, in the, in the last couple of days. Um, there is, uh, speaking of, um, of quoting your boss, there's a terrific um, uh, 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 piece about this um, from Lynn Conaway and Marie Radford. Uh, they say in, in an article, the power of triangulation and mixed methods for comparing results, developing and informing other methods, recasting questions or results, and extending the breadth and range of inquiry. I think that is just a beautiful way of expressing this, and, but it really doesn't have to do just with the sort of research methods that people apply to problems such as ours, but really the kind of mixed methodness that we, we're hoping to, to, to I, I'm hoping to get to, uh, will, have, will be mixed in all sorts of ways. It's going to be mixed, for example, in terms of the collection of expertise that we bring to bear, um, not just ethnography. It's not going to be just quantitative. There will be traditional librarians and expertise and lots of other things as well. Um, so that's really, um, that's really the, 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 it could pass for the theme of what I have to, to say today. Um, I, I, I have this, um, this subtitle here. I can't scroll here. here. Um, what's next for library-based and user needs research? Really what I, if, I wish I could correct this because what I'm, because my, the real subject of my talk has to do with, with what I wish to see out of a user needs function that is based in the library and focused on the library's um, uh, uh, work. So in terms of orientation to where I'm coming from, I have to say this, that, that, um, that at bottom, at this point, 
the only thing I know how to do is be a library administrator. So what you're going to have this afternoon is a strictly bureaucratic kind of, 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 of view to how to go about what we want out of building a, um, a user needs function. Um, I also have to say that um, that I might as well just sort of um, admit that I that my that all of my thoughts are sort of colored by a belief that we are operating now that we uh, our profession is operating at a time of existential threat, and with that I w with my own paranoia in this way I take I, I stand shoulder to quivering shoulder with the, my qualitative professors back in the day. But that really just sort of, by way of, 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 of putting on the table where I think I'm coming from in terms of my, um, uh, my view of this question. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about has to do with mixed methodness. And this is, and, and here, um, uh, uh, I, I'll, I'm going to move quickly because we've been talking, we've, we've covered a, a lot of the uh, pieces of this. But really what we're doing, what I'm referring to is, is, is how, how uh, the, the, the contrast between the kind of, of um, ethnographic tests that, that we did at Rochester um, and, and at UNC Charlotte, uh, the, the maps, the, um, uh, uh, the diaries and so on that we've been seeing um, throughout the last couple of days, and how those kinds of things um, uh, 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 relate to other kinds of big data uh, applications, as for example, um, uh, the, the, the idea idea of using uh, Wi-Fi data that, that can parse to telephone numbers in such a way as to provide a kind of, of, of big data tracking of who's using our facilities, how long they're there, and what they're doing. Um, the same kind of thing can be is is already being done in 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 some um, uh, research libraries with card swipes, where 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 users are just required to swipe whatever they're doing and, and wherever they're going. Um, we've got um, uh, uh, search data and data mining. The idea of 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 mining that kind of data for 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 complements to the kind of thing that we've been developing with um, uh, uh, ethnographic re research um, uh, feels feels really powerful. So um, uh, even better, when you're thinking about these kinds of uh, big data um, uh, complements to, to, um, to ethnography, there, there's also a, 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 an entire body of, of research. Um, business intelligence is one way of referring to it, which is a great place to go for examples of how to go about taking huge data sets and creating meaning from it in various ways. The, the, the business intelligence literature is going to be highly oriented toward things that are not teaching and learning, but the idea that there are these conceptual models for getting from, from question to, to mean, or from, from question to data to meaning, this is really, this is really interesting. Um, all right. So, what I need next out of out of um, my user uh, research function, the second has to do with a broader focus. I, I I'm saying this, and I'm hoping that this isn't terribly um, controversial. That 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 user needs research. Uh, to date has been limited um, in terms of um, it, the portions of a user's experience in, 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 a, in libraries. And I think that we've seen a, um, a, a good view to that in the last couple of days where we've seen an awful lot of attention paid to dis, uh, space design, for example, or to uh, research work practice. Um, uh, these thing, this really isn't a critique from my point of view because, because I, I, I continually remind myself that the application of this tool set, this, this approach to research, this is all a very new thing, uh, re relatively speaking. And so, the, so, so it's, it's really unfair to expect that, um, that, that applying ethnography to research librarianship is going to address and solve every issue that's, in, that, that's before us. So, uh, so it really, it's, this is an, another way of saying this is that, is that, we're, is that, is that um, uh, uh, ethnography has done such a good job at, at analyzing the, 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 the problems that it's analyzed that it's now it's time to turn it to a broader range of things. Um, 
All right. So, uh, so I, I want the, the ethnography to do, or the user needs research rather, to to do uh, to do more. Here's what I'm talking about with that. Um, uh, one way of looking at this is to just to follow the money. Uh, where where is our budget money going? It goes first to collections. Easily half of the half of our budgets. Um, uh, how are these collections used and how much? Next, mediation services, arguably the other half. We've been talking about mediation in various kinds of ways, but, but, the, but, um, uh, but, um, but, the, but the meaning of the word mediation has changed so dramatically over the past 20 or 30 years, and, I, and, and, and I'm feeling a need for, for uh, ways of capturing the, the work that our librarians are actually doing. Or maybe when I think about following the money in the sense of the money that our that our uh, uh, institutions invest in our facilities. Um, uh, uh, so yes, we've been talking about space design, but there is so much that 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 I need as a library administrator, from the point of view of of, of telling the story of how those facili facilities are used and how much they are used. Um, Okay, so in, in each of those three cases, we, I, I want a better correspondence between the, the research that we're doing and the scope of our current operations. I want to drill down a little bit deeper to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about in terms of collections, mediation, and building use in part because this is the core function of our libraries, but also because each one of them in its own way is a deep, uh, is is a sphere of where our impact on users is is already wildly and I would say unbelievably successful successful in I'm gonna guess guess virtually every uh, library that's represented in this room every library that I know of in all three of these cases um, uh, we're already doing unprecedented work, but without the means, in many cases, to of documenting it, improving it, or celebrating the victories that we've that, that, that we've got. So, this issue drives me to, to distraction. The idea that we have fabulous success in front of us and can't tell that story as well as we need to. This is awful. All right, so collection use. Um, digital formats, we know that digital formats for, for, for collections have lifted the use of our collections, the, the collections that we buy, to levels that we could never have imagined before. How high are they? That's the problem. We can't say. We, I, I, either I can't measure it, or I can measure just pieces of it, or maybe just in my library in isolation, or I can just wait for standards to evolve someday if it happens in time, which it won't. Okay, so you might say, wait a minute, there is already a measure of collection use that we have that does all of the things that I've just said, and you'd be right, we actually have this. We, what we've got is print circulation. Uh, in the midst of a 20-year freefall that shows absolutely no sign of, of abating, this is a 63% decline. It, it, would anybody look at that chart and, and think that we have reached bottom on this? Um, it could be, but I just don't think there's any reason to think so. Okay, so an administrator who hired me recently, I'm going to be very careful how I express this, an administrator who hired me recently actually knew about this graph, and he used it in the only way that one could possibly use it, which was to say, as evidence of the declining utility of books and reading. This person is gone now. There's no more need to worry about him. But you can see that we're stuck today, allowing print circulation to serve as a proxy, as, a, as the default proxy for the usefulness of our collections. And this is not just a bad proxy, it's a dangerous one. And we need a, some kind of mixed method approach to address this and fast. Another example, mediation functions. There was a time when our counts of reference transactions were a good enough proxy for mediation. But here you have, just as the case of collection use, digitalness having completely transformed what mediation means. We all know that. 
um, but uh, here again, um, uh, what we've, the only thing in front of us really is, is, is this bad view to, the, to a world that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, light collections, wait a minute. Um, uh, so this is actually another thing that, my, that this administrator I'm referring to knew about, and, and he made the only argument you can make of this, which is to say that students no longer need mediation. They know now, he was specific about this, they, don't, they no longer meet, need library mediation services because internet, right? Be, and it's okay, he's still gone. Um, uh, Something like this same story, though, applies to the uh, incredible volume of building use that our buildings are getting. In this case, it's not so much because gate counts are going down. With that, that isn't the case. But the fact is that they're that, that simple, dumb measure, it doesn't help us either. Uh, and that comes to the same thing, because here again, we find a remarkable success story that we can't tell because we don't have the data points. It's the storytelling, that's what I can't get enough of. Storytelling that rolls down like waters. I think of this, another word for describing this kind of storytelling is marketing. And, and I wanna call it out directly. Um, I want a user needs research function that is designed from the outset. So as to do the kind of work that we've been seeing all day, yesterday, today. I want it to do all those things, but I also want it to be designed from scratch in such a way as to give me uh, the ability to tell the story, not me, give everyone the ability to, to tell the story of, uh, of what we do. So if I were in your shoes, I might groan to hear this. I kind of groan myself because it's so easy for somebody like me to continually heap new layers of, 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 of uh, what uh, user needs research has to do. Um, it's got these functional aspects, figuring out who they are and what they need is, as a thing. But there's also, there's, there's also library assessment or uh, the university assessment efforts. Uh, lots of people sort of heap that on as, as, as an outcome that they need out of user needs research. And now I'm saying that I also need for user needs research to help me market the library. And I really, really do. I, I work with, with folks outside the, the library uh, almost as much as I work with people inside. And so I feel the sting every day of the two ambient narratives relating to the research library. They're like two sides of a coin. Um, folks have these warm, fuzzy, positive associations that are nonetheless heavily weighted with nostalgia. Alternatively, or even at the same time, folks have, this dis have dismissive associations that reduce to some version of what that administrator was getting at, that libraries are irrelevant or less relevant due to the internet. Now, I hate the nostalgic narrative, but the second one makes me frantic. People don't read anymore. It's all available for free on the internet. The, um, the, the, the scholarly monograph is dead. Students don't need help finding and using information. And Stanley, what are we gonna do to get kids back in the library? Am I the only person who gets that line? The only people who say these things haven't been in the library since the 70s. I'm absolutely convinced that that's the case. But it comes up again and again. Now, both of the ambient narratives are easy to refute because they're just so demonstrably wrong. But we really need to recognize that there's an ocean of it out there. Um, and if it's left on its own, th that dismissive narrative li leads quickly to financial disinvestment. That's what I mean when I use the words existential threat. I really don't think this is hyperbole. So I've already su suggested to you the guts of one counter narrative about how we study and improve and, um, and then celebrate the spectacular successes that we've got. Um, but really what I want is, is a user needs research that, that serves as a bridge that gets us from the use stories to the core message that I want to convey, which is this. Far from making the library irrelevant, the digital age is making libraries more successful at their core mission than they've ever been before. 
as a library administrator, I just don't have the luxury of a user needs research function that doesn't also enable me to say those words. All right, the next thing that I want out of a user needs function is that, is that it do a better job than it has done in the past at recognizing the privilege. I, th th uh, you know, I th po po poor and small libraries have always been a, a, a difficult case for adapting research in, 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 in libraries. This is, this is true regardless of what that research is. There's plenty of good reasons for this. Um, uh, uh, so it's not really, this shouldn't be interpreted as any kind of criticism. Um, uh, on the other hand, we should also, I think we need to recognize that an awful lot of the user needs research that we have, uh, that we have thus far um, uh, uh, also falls into this, to, to this kind of unconscious bias. Um, uh, an example ha would be any of the uh, uh, research uh, that we has been directed at space design, which often presupposes the staff and renovation support that are just unimaginable to many small and poor libraries. So I can, uh, I can promise you that back when in, uh, at the University of Rochester, when we were beginning to talk externally about our user needs research, it really just wasn't even possible to do this without bumping up continually against um, against the severe constraints that that uh, that, that our partner libraries um, uh, uh, were uh, struggled under, uh, that either prevented or limited the application of our work at, um, at their institutions. So fast forward to my return to Louisiana the la last year. This is after a 15-year absence. I have been absolutely astonished by the decline of public academic libraries in the state. Recently, I tracked book expenditures for state academic libraries between 2008 and 2014. So 2014, the recession's over, right? If you exclude LSU and Tulane, the book purchasing went down 75%. That money is not coming back. What do those libraries do if they're not building collections? We have li uh, uh, academic libraries in that state where there is no collecting happening beyond the state consortial agreement that, that, that brings a, a really basic breadbasket of, of materials, and there's others that have very little to add to, to that. So the, the staffing at these libraries is in an equally precarious state with staff stretched and depleted in heartbreaking ways. And, and, and so Louisiana may be further along in this path than some others, but I'm guessing that it's not terribly different from what we find in other states, that we are splitting into a situation of haves and have-nots that is um, wherein you've got LSU, it's the LSU two lanes on one side and everybody else in Louisiana on, on the other. So what I'm suggesting here is that user needs research um, uh, turn its focus in, in ways that make it easier to either uh, make subject of, of small, poor library environments or to, um, to make those results um, uh, better translated for those, for those libra libraries. Another idea is that, that research might turn to, to the consortial um, uh, organizations that are uh, of the sort, in an analogous way, that the consortial, consortiums are purchasing, purchasing um, uh, uh, content. Uh, or applying this kind of research to the systems that small and poor institutions um, uh, use to make those systems more intelligent and responsive. Um, so I, I, I think that there is, there's lots of good and exciting work to do in, in this sphere. And, and, I'm, uh, and I, what I can tell you is, is that w as I build my own user needs function at LSU, this is going to be a component of what I do. I can't, living in that community in the way that I do, I can't do this without having spillover benefits for, for um, my brother and sister libraries. Okay. Um, organizational, um, an organizational perspective um, working at our relationship. Um, you know, anytime you take something 
a new function and add it to the library, um, uh, something like a, a, a user needs function that, that actually takes resources and changes how people do what they do, this is actually pretty intrusive. And it's so hard to do. It's such, a, it's such an, an obstacle to create this something out of nothing that there's all sorts of um, of of impetus for for just kind of putting a check in the box i've made the, I've, I've made my organization chart changes and now i'm done and of course that is the that is a, a, ter a really bad idea um, uh, the idea, the the um, my my suggestion is that instead that 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 the, a user needs function group and administrators who are sort of creating and supporting them come to, to sort of commit themselves to a relationship that they work at on a, on a in a systematic way. So. On the side of suggestions for administrators, first of all as I've just said, recognizing that library culture is not trivial and that new roles like this need time and they will involve friction uh, before settling into the kind of roles that we have um, imagined for them. Giving that, sub that unit extra support and more than its share of attention, at least at the outset, but I am kind of think it may just be forever, I don't know. Um, Next, administrators need to be exceptionally clear about the expectations that they have for their user needs unit and the outcomes that they're supposed to produce because it's just so new to everybody. You're going to have to repeat this again and again. Tell me again, why are these people here and why should I change what I'm doing because of what they've just, uh, what, they're, what they're studying? Um, uh, the last point for administrators is that they be vigilant in mining the research results that their units produce um, for, for implementing bits wherever possible. You need success stories. You need them early and often, um, again, by way of, of justifying the, uh, the expense and trouble of, of creating, creating this kind of function. Of course, it wouldn't be a working at our relationship thing without suggestions for the researcher side, and that's and, and so I have a few suggestions for the researchers. The first is the researcher component of that uh, of that culture question that I've just uh, that I was referring to earlier. Um, it's just I think that that the user needs research staff need to understand that um, that they need to, to be uh, uh, taking a long view. Someone said at one point here, viewing the library culture as being a, an object of anthropological study, and I think that's pretty well gets to what I'm talking about. Um, next, another flavor of mixed methodness that, that, I, that I would like to, um, to suggest is that user needs research do a better job than it has done today in making space for traditional, to making space for traditional librarian expertise. Um, everything that I, met, I, 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 I uh, was talking about relative to, um, to collections and mediation relate to, uh, uh, at bottom, to spheres where librarian expertise is, is, is terribly important. I think that the way we've been, we've been looking at things up till now is, is that we, we, we hire th these um, uh, 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 qualitative research people come, to come and, and, and teach librarians. And what I'm talking about here is that there's going to be a natural back and forth. It's going to work in the other direction as well. Uh, my last suggestion for the research team uh, is that it do whatever it can to learn about their library administration's objectives and priorities. How are they doing what they're, how do they, what are they trying to do and how can, can your work help move that agenda forward? And I, I know that I've already been speaking to that in terms of my marketing sort of agenda, um, but I think that, um, that um, uh, that uh, th this has got to be a focus of continual continual work for 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 uh, a, a unit that may not be a, accustomed to thinking in terms of broad library um, administrative uh, work. Uh, 
Actually, I think that, that a, good, a good way that this could actually, um, a, a good way to proceed is to actually put the user needs research staff in the library administrative suite. And here, I guess I'm asking our, uh, after working at our relationship, I'm asking them to move in. Um, so, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, um, the, the last thing I'm, the, to sort of um, sum up what I'm, not summing up, but in sort of conclusion here, um, uh, I'd like to um, speak to a, 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 a library administrative justification for the, the whole user needs um, uh, research function that I, that I just, I don't, I don't haven't, I'm not sure that I've ever seen this in the literature and I haven't spoken to it myself. And I, so I'd like to, to say this here. And that is that, um, th is how user needs research positions the library within its institution in, in ways that are extraordinarily powerful. This is a lesson that we began learning very, very early on in our experience with Nancy Foster and Susan Gibbons and, 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 and at, the, at that time. And what I'm trying to say is, is that the kinds of things that we were studying, this could have happened in Student affairs, it could have been happening, residential life, who knows? There's, there's nothing about the kind of work that we were doing that, was, that, had, that meant it had to happen in the library. But nobody else was doing it. So the library devotes itself to this. It does, it, it does its work in a really systematic way. And then it turns around and begins to speak to the institution about it. And guess what happens? Suddenly, the library is perceived as the place that knows more about a really important thing, which is undergraduate life or graduate, uh, you know, the, what students are like, what they use, what they carry from, from class to class. Suddenly, the library is the place that, that owns this, this turf, so to speak. So as I'm thinking about how to go about sort of raising the relevance of, of, of the profile of, of, the, of the library within the institution, what, a, what an incredible investment this turned out to be. I mean, uh, all of the practical benefits that were all being wonderful, but I'm trying to, but I'm speaking here to the strategy piece, why, why a, 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 an administrator would, would go to the trouble of, of doing this beautiful work. Thank you.